It's Tuesday night, 9 o'clock, yeah! Hello, HQties, and welcome to the new normal. You, staring at your phone every night at 9 p.m., waiting for a man in a suit and tie to pop up on your screen and shout trivia questions at you while you scramble your brain and come up with an answer in 10 seconds. I'm that man in a suit and tie, you're you, and this is HQ, the live mobile game show you play in your phone where you answer questions to win cash. I am your hoist with the moist, Scott Rogowski, the big Rogowski, live from the greatest city on earth, the city that never sleeps, Venice, California. Staying out of Malibu with all one million plus of my little Rogowski urban achievers, including Warren Kennard, Steve Dem, Andrew and Samantha Wharton, Sophie Shaw, Lori Shine, a belated birthday, shout out to James Lang, Matt Rogowski, no relation, and my mom, Toby Rogowski, some relation, who's recovering from surgery. I love you, Ma! You know how this works by now, right? Uh, answer me, my question's 12, and I give to thee my dollars 2,500. That's right, 2,500 Desi Relifords, 2,500 Devon Whites, 2,500 big ones. That is our prize tonight. Could buy you four tickets to this year's Fire Festival. I hear it's gonna be hot. Ja Rule's coming back. Are you, are you strapped in? Have you done your research? Are you ready for a quarter hour of mirth, trivia, and mayhem? Come on, y'all, it's time to have fun. C come on, y'all, it's time to have fun. It's time to get quizzed by a host wearing gray. Time to quiz with me and get some money. Time to get down to the nitty gritty. Let's get this show on the road. Cumero, numero, uno, which of these is a common term for a very tall building? Air tickler, skyscraper, or cloud sniffer? Yeah. Cloud sniffer, air tickler? The term was first used in the 19th century for buildings taller than 10 floors. They go way higher now. I gotta scrape the sky. Come on the spot, look, look an extra fly. We got skyscraper. That is your answer, 1,067,926. Got skyscraper, it sings a pretty tune. What is a band without skyscraper? 1,067,000 tickling the twine on the line for Cumero, numero tumero. Spider-Man is known for flinging what from his wrists? Air freshener, webs, or liquid cheese? Hmm, maybe if Spidey lived in South Philly, he'd shoot liquid cheese on his steaks, whiz with. But Peter Parker wasn't bitten by a radioact radioactive can of whiz, no. He was bitten by a spider, and thus shoots spider webs! <laughs> webs! Ha! 
1,036 of you are itsy bitsy HQDs crawling up the HQ quiz to Q3. The phrase wearing your heart on your sleeve means what? Openly showing emotion, wearing bright patterns, or having surgery? Oh no! Now this is a saying, an idiomatic expression, okay? Do not literally wear your heart on your sleeve, especially in this weather. It's an expression that means openly showing emotion, sweet emotion. 1,028,654. Ooh, 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 ooh. I'll come to your emotional rescue. The rest of you having a heart attack, ack, 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 you ought to know by now. Q4, the skincare brand Aesop shares its name with a legendary what? Fabulist, king, or farmer. Aesop, it's not just stuff you can slop on your skin. Aesop was the ancient Greek storyteller credited with compiling such fables as the goose who laid the golden egg, right? Aesop's fables, he's the F-A-B-U-L-I-S-T, the fabulist, and looky pie pie, Savage question at Q for 334,970, getting it right, but losing nearly 700,000 of you on a single question laying an egg at Q4. The rest got sagging their swag, pep in their step. Holla back, youngin, to Q5. Which of these U.S. presidents was never a vice president? Herbert Hoover, Richard Nixon, or Gerald Ford? Gerald Ford. Now, Tricky Dick, Richard Nixon was Ike's understudy for eight years in the 1950s. Gerald Ford had both the vice presidency, then the vice, then the presidency thrust on him in the 1970s. But Herbert Hoover, he wasn't cut out for that Veep life. We'd like to thank you, Herbert Hoover. 147,034 are getting a chicken in every pot and a car in every garage. They're hearing a Hoover and they're getting Q6. What was the nickname of the first manned airplane to break the sound barrier? Glamorous Glennis, Spirit of St. Louis, or Project Rocket? Breaking the sound, going at the speed of sound with wings? The original Jägermeister, Chuck Jaeger, in 1947 became the first man to fly faster than sound. You feel those Gs? Yeah, the Spirit of St. Louis? No, that was Charles Lindbergh. This thing shot like a rocket, but it was a plane, a Bell X-1, which Chuck nicknamed Glamorous Glennis, after his wife at the time. Glennis, 39,737, getting it right on a slightly savage, ever so brutal question here. How about that? We lost over 100,000 on this one, 40,000 left. By the way, Chuck Yeager, 93 years old, Still around, a terrific tweeter, worth a follow. Q7, during part of the Cold War, what city's MLB team added the word legs to its name? Cincinnati, Pittsburgh, or Boston? This team was a charter member of the American Association going back to 1882, started out as the Red Stockings, shortened to the Reds in 1890, and remained the Reds until 1953 when the Red Scare came along and gripped America and caused a lot of problems, including a name change for the Cincinnati Reds to become the Red Legs. Yes, 23,003 of you are talking baseball with me tonight at Q7. Spring training is in full swing. 23,003 got legs and know how to use them. They're eating that Skyline Chili and Graders ice cream. On to Q8, which company's 2012 smartphones included Beats Audio Technology, Samsung, Apple, or HTC? B -b Beats, B -b 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 Beats, Beats. You may remember Apple's purchase of Beats in 2014 for $3 billion, a deal which made the already insanely wealthy Jimmy Iovine and Dr. Dre even wealthier. But in 2012, the Taiwanese company HTC had a minority share and integrated Beats audio into their phones. HTC's your answer. You're down with HTC? 8,370 of you are. You guys are ready for the next episode, aka the next question, Q9. Which of these people has won the most Emmys for outstanding host of a reality TV show? Howie Mandel, Tom Bergeron, or Anthony Bourdain? When is HQ gonna get nominated for Emmys, huh? 
I I'd like an Emmy. If you tapped Howie, how we doing? You're not doing well. You're doing the Watuzi right out of this quiz. If you tap Tony Bourdain, you have no reservations for the next question because Tom Bergeron has won one Emmy for hosting a reality show, which is one more than the other guys. 3,927 are stepping up to the podium, accepting their acceptance speech, their victory here at Q9. He technically has two Emmys, by the way, a daytime and primetime, but the daytimes don't count. Tom Bergeron, America's Funniest Home Videos, Dancing with the Stars, Hollywood Squares, you know him, sort of. Q10, The White Stripes named an album after an art movement co-founded by which artist? Gustav Klimt, Pete Mondrian, or Pablo Picasso? Gustav, Pete, or Pablo, huh? Is it gonna be the life of Pablo for you? A Seven Nation Army could not hold this guy down. This style is the second studio album by Megan Jack White, released in 2000, named for the Dutch style and movement, co-founded by Pete Mondrian. That's right, Petey Pablo, 1,657. Remember those bold colors, those grid patterns of Mondrian? You guys are falling in love with a question, Q11, the rest falling out of the quiz with an icky thump. Q11 sprinter Justin Gatlin once ran a record-breaking 100-meter sprint thanks to what advantage? An industrial fan running downhill or extreme high altitude? This guy, Justin Gatlin, very fast man, very fast, thorough. Gatlin was on a Japanese game show and ran a world record 9.45 second 100 meter dash, beating Usain Bolt's 9.58 record, but it doesn't officially count because yeah, he got by with a little help from his friends, uh, giant industrial fans. Yeah, those friends. The fan was blowing him down the track. 368, getting it right here on a savage question at Q11, penultimately savage. 368 of you hopping in your chariots of fire. Bum, 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 bum. Sprinting to the finish line, all the way to Q12. You made it to the end, you gotta answer one more. It all boils down to this, folks. 368, $2,500. Who's gonna be breaking the tape and taking home that cash prize? Q12, the author of which classic work was widely known for its hatred of the Eiffel Tower? Les Miserables, The Necklace, or Waiting for Godot? La Tour Eiffel, huh? Eiffel. Tower. Now this man, this is a great little, little anecdote, probably apocryphal. This man allegedly ate lunch at the Eiffel Tower every day and when asked why, replied, it's the only place in Paris where I can eat and not see that hideous tower. Probably said it in French. His name was Guy de Maupassant and he wrote hundreds of short stories, including La Parure, which is French for the necklace. The necklace is your answer at Q12, and 120 of you are our winners tonight, baby, baby, baby. <laughs>